everyone, my name is Sabrina and welcome back to my channel. Today I am making a video that I honestly, truly, and completely never ever thought that I would be making, and that is how I got scammed out of $3,000. <laughs> So, um, a little bit of a story time here. I'm hopefully going to be able to tell you this in like a chronological, organized way, but I don't know. I would like to clarify some things. This actually happened about a month ago, maybe even two months ago now, in June of 2018, in case you're watching this in the distant future. Um, and. I live in Canada, and that is 3,000 Canadian dollars, and actually only 1,500 is actually mine because it was split between me and my roommate. And even though it's only half my money, I'm the person that basically coordinated getting herself scammed and sent them $3,000. So the first thing you need to know is that I have been planning and wanting to move to the UK for a long time now and I started actually like formally planning my move which is coming up September in September it's now August so I started planning that with my friend who will be my roommate in like April I want to say maybe May and this happened in June so the first thing that we started planning was um, an apartment because we did not want to travel there <laughs> to go look at places now another thing I need to clarify in case you're not from Canada in Canada it's not that weird to rent from someone without having viewed the apartment in person like it's kind of risky and you have to be kind of careful but it's done quite often so I never really thought that it would be that much different there turns out it is. <laughs> so back in May or June when we were like, Kate, we're going September, it's happening, I started looking all the time on websites like Rightmove and Zoopla to kind of get a feel for what the apartment market is like over there and to snatch anything up if it came up, not realizing that that's not something I can do from over here. So I was basically just emailing people, but when you email like, you have to message through Rightmove and Zoopla, and 90% of the emails I was getting back were like... 90% of the emails I was getting back from Rightmove and Zoopla when I was sending inquiries were like, we have too many inquiries into this property, you're too late, or they just completely ignored what I was saying anyways, and essentially I was just being like, um, we live in Canada, we're trying to find an apartment overseas, is there any way we could get this apartment or get one of your apartments without having viewed it in person first because we don't really have any friends over there that would view it for us and we didn't want to do a trip and yeah so like I said nobody ever really was like that's not a thing that happens here <laughs> so I didn't know and um, by the time I got put in contact with the scammer I still did not know that that was not a thing okay Oh, one more thing, just reading my notes. I would like to clarify before I tell you the whole story, I realize there are some points in the story where I behave rather stupidly and I make some poor decisions. In retrospect, I can see that. While it was happening, not so much. I'm the kind of person who likes to think she's smarter than everyone else and that puts me in a lot of bad situations like getting scammed out of three thousand dollars. So like I will justify something that doesn't make sense or is kind of sketchy. I'll immediately be like oh well that's because of this even though it's not <laughs> or it's not clarified and I should have asked. I try to justify things rather than asking them questions when need be and that's what so I found the scammer apartment just I haven't even clarified that this is an apartment scam surprise it's an apartment scam um, I found the apartment on Zoopla which is a very common place to search for apartments in the UK and so I found it on Zoopla and I sent them the usual in Zoopla messaging thing going hi I'm Sabrina I'm looking to rent this apartment can you give me some more information and they put me in contact with Mylet so then I got an email from Mylet which is my hyphen let and they were like, this is an apartment being let by an individual 
not with a real estate agency, can we give them your email? And I was like, sure. And then they sent me an email to the landlord. <laughs> also, why I feel like I need to add here. So I have since now learned that if someone is privately letting an apartment, they don't just like put it on Zoopla. They usually go through something like MyLet, not MyLet, Open Rent. Um, but we will come back to that name. So I was put in contact with the landlord. His name was Michael McCock, which is so funny in retrospect. Um, it's not, it's M-O-C-O-C-K, which, you know what? Yeah, I, I didn't want to hold that against him, okay? I didn't want to hold him against him. His email was M-I-C-M-O-C-O-C-K at gmail.com. Feel free to send him some harshly worded emails if you so wish. <laughs> I haven't emailed him since this happened. Um, <clears throat> I doubt that email actually is still active. And in his first email, he kind of just gave us this explanation for why he was renting this apartment. And um, I guess because I had put in my email like, oh, we're whoever, we're coming from Canada, blah, 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 in my email once we got put in contact. And he explained that he had this apartment that he used to live in when he worked in Edinburgh, but his company had now sent him to work in Italy, like he worked for, I forget what kind of company it was, it was like, might have even been in real estate, I don't know. But anyways, he was trying to rent out the flat while he had to do a contract in Italy for a few years. Okay, so he also sent me some more information about the apartment. He sent me more pictures and like a general description. Um, and I just basically ate it up. I was like, oh, he's telling the truth. I never really thought, oh, he might be sketchy. Um, mostly because he his story kind of checked out. Like it, it was like a weird backstory for someone who's a scammer, but I guess then it was effective, so whatever. The other thing that kind of distracted me was that he was very professional and he was like, well, if you're really serious about this, I need to know that like, you can afford to live here. I want proof of funds or I want like some sort of deposit or something. And it seemed to me, this is me trying to justify it again, it seemed to me that he was like trying to figure it out while we were trying to figure it out, which you would expect from somebody who's letting themselves without a real estate agent. Anyway, so I was like, okay, well, like, I don't know what you want for proof of funds, and like, other than a deposit, I, I don't know what to tell you. Um, and then I never actually sent him, like, any proof of funds or anything, because he just never really asked for it. And after a few days, we emailed, like, back and forth, kind of talking about ourselves, which is weird now. And I got an email from him basically being like, you got the apartment, congrats, this is what we do next. And he said that he was using a company called Open Rent, and that they would help with the whole rental process, that they did this a lot, that this is what the company was for, and that they would be the ones to kind of um, work with us moving forward because he would be in Italy when we got there. And I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna look into Open Rent, and I Googled it, and Open Rent totally checks out, okay? This is where it gets real highbrow because Open Rent is a real company and they actually do rent out apartments from individual landlords to tenants without any real estate agents, without any real estate fees or anything like that. It's a real thing. And so I was like, oh, he's using Open Rent and I figured he was now gonna sign up with Open Rent and do everything from there. <laughs> Again, I never questioned it. The most important part of this using open rent thing is that they of course were not using open rent. <laughs> they had created their own fake version of open rent that was very similar to real open rent. So I, again, I'll admit I didn't go to open rent myself. We have now Michael McCock, <laughs> the fake landlord, and open rent the real company, and now fake open rent, who apparently is working with Michael McCock. They're probably the same person. I don't know. And now that there are more red flags that I missed about this, because when we got sent the email saying, you're in from open rent, there was a bunch of information attached with that. We got the apartment address, and so I googled it, and then I discovered that there was an advertisement for selling that apartment, all the pictures and the description and everything on a website called Move 8. 
and I was like, ah! But then I noticed that on there it said that the closing date was the same date as the day, <laughs> the first day that I had seen the apartment on Zoopla. So again, I justified that for the landlord and thought, oh, he tried to sell his apartment, couldn't close, and so now he's trying to rent it out. And I figured that's why it was so cheap. The other reason I figured it was so cheap, because it was a really cheap monthly rent for what it was, but I figured it was that cheap because it was about the same as like a one bedroom apartment and the second bedroom in that place was not very big at all. It was like basically a box room that they had put a bed and a tiny little chest of drawers in. So I was like, oh, it's kind of like if you threw a bed in a closet sort of deal. So that's why it's so cheap. No, it's so cheap because it's a scam. Um, so. The other information that that email had in was like a tenancy agreement and like legal documents, um, tons of information about how we would move forward and when we would get the keys and how who we would talk to and where we were sending the money to and everything like that. And of course now I realize they just took all that information from actual open rent. Like they basically copied open rent's emails and just used them and made them look almost completely legit. Um, the other thing in here was like how much we had to pay them. We had to pay them a deposit and first month's rent and altogether it was in pounds and altogether when you transfer that money it is um, $3,000. It was $2,980 and like 80 some dollars. So it was a lot of money. <laughs> and I was like, ah! But I had googled everything and I was kind of like, okay, well this makes sense. The one thing, and this, I didn't realize this until I got to the bank, which I should have realized before, but I got to the bank and I realized that we were transferring the money to a personal account. Like it was in a person's name, not a company name. And I know that sometimes, particularly when it's a smaller company or it's a newer company, both of which Open Rent appears to be, it has to be in a personal person's name because they can't get like a business account or something like that. Like, I don't know. I know that happens sometimes. So I was like, oh, that's probably it. And the other thing was they had all of the information that you needed. The bank I should say was NatWest Bank, which I now, as somebody looking for a bank account in the UK, realized was an online bank account. I had no idea at the time and I tried to Google it, but nothing really came up and I was like, oh, it's just like a UK bank, oh, I don't know. Um, afterwards we realized it wasn't <laughs> just a regular bank, it was an online bank. But like I said, they had all the information, like you need tons of like numbers and codes and stuff for when you wire transfer money and they had it all course because they were scammers and they didn't want anything to mess up um, but it made it seem legit but then I sent the money and and then I lost three thousand dollars <laughs> I will say almost as soon as I literally as soon as I sent the money I left the bank and I sat outside the bank it's in a strip mall I sat at a bench in the strip mall and texted my sister I was like I feel like I've made a grave mistake like ugh. So then, feeling like I'd made this mistake, I was just like nervous about it, I was like, I need to contact Open Rent directly and say, this is, I just sent money to you, I just really want to make sure that it's you. So that's what I did, and I gave them the email address, because the email address that they had was different. I didn't include this part, but it was openrent at realtyagent.com, so I figured it was the email that they, their real estate agents, the people who work as real estate agents, big real estate agents. I don't know, I don't know what I thought. I figured it was just like somebody in their office used this email to handle transactions between tenants and landlords. And so they have their general inquiries, which is info at openrent.co.uk or just .com, I don't know. And so I emailed the info one and then I realized that in the actual email, because I got an email back from OpenRent, I think almost immediately that had like you know when they send you an automatic email back, it has all the information. At the bottom of their email, it had their physical address, their mailing address, and their email address. And I realized the fake email that I had gotten, that I didn't know was fake at the time, was almost exactly the same. So at first I was like, oh, okay, they look the same, they're definitely the same, it's legit. And then I was like, ooh, the fake email <laughs> does not have the email address in it. It does not say info at openrent.com on the fake email. Presumably because they don't want you to email them and go, hey, I just sent you a bunch of money, is it you? Which is what I did. And um, Real Open Rent sent me an email the next day, which was a Saturday, and they said that they didn't own that email address. Except me, 
just royally effing everything up, had misspelled the email that I had sent to them saying, is this your email address? And, um, and so I had to email them back and just clarify because I still could not believe that I had actually just sent $3,000 to a stranger for nothing. Um, <clears throat> I, at this point, was really not believing it, but also kind of believing it, it being the fact that I got scammed. So I emailed the landlord, Michael McCock, and I told him that I had my lawyer looking into it. And I was very like, uh, I'm the law, I'm the laws. And <laughs> so I think I was kind of freaky. But um, I technically did have a lawyer looking into it. The problem is it was my brother and like there's really nothing that they can do in Canada about this. Because um, I live in Canada and this is in the UK. I can't even like, like it's not targeting Canadians. I fully walked into this and was like, take my money. Um, so that's great. Um, but I did, I do think I kind of freaked him out because I got two emails, one from him and one from the fake open rent account, like within 10 minutes of each other one morning. And at that point, the fake open rent account was like so openly fake. It didn't even have any kind of format to it. There were spelling mistakes. And this is the kicker. They impersonated the CEO of open rent. They're like, I'm, I forget the guy's name. And then it said CEO of Open Rent. I was like, yeah, he's emailing me. I'm sure he's emailing me. He's so, so concerned. Like, no. It was so bad. And that same morning, this is Sunday morning now, I Googled the address again because I was like freaked out and I couldn't think about anything else. And I discovered that that Move 8 real estate posting of this same apartment that was listed to sell the apartment and had a closing date before the Zoopla advert had now gone listed as sold <laughs> and I was like that's not good that's supposed to be my apartment and uh, yeah so we called them well I didn't call them because I was bawling and I cried to my sister to call them so she called them and was like what's the deal and they were like we think you've been scammed we think someone took our photos from our advertisement and our description and scammed you out of three thousand dollars and I was like <laughs> and um yeah so then I sent another email to open rent to be like oh and they on Monday sent me one back um, saying, yeah, no, you've definitely been, been scammed. We don't have somebody. So the guy's name, I'm just going to throw this in there. I forgot to say it earlier. I sent money to someone named Ian Wooters at NatWest Bank on Sunday when I realized that that apartment had been sold and we were definitely being scammed. I called NatWest Bank. I called RBC, which is my bank. Neither of them could do anything until Monday. NatWest couldn't do anything ever. I was like, well, they're doing legal things with your bank. They're like, we don't care. I was like, cool. Um, RBC just couldn't do anything until Monday when their banks reopened. So I took Monday off because <laughs> I was emotionally wrecked and I went to the bank first thing in the morning, cancelled the um, wire transfer and I luckily got the same person who had sent the wire transfer and I was like, I was crying, I'm a crier, I was a mess and she felt really bad because she was the person who sent it and they're supposed to kind of like, like almost interrogate you when you're sending a wire transfer to someone you don't know um, and she didn't really so that makes her kind of look bad but I also had all the information so I don't know she felt really bad she was pretty confident that we would get it back I definitely ran out of space on my camera on my memory card I mean so that's fun Celebi. so in that same email I got from Open Rent on Monday saying, yeah, you've been scammed. They told me to send them all the information that I had, which I sent them everything. Um, and they basically, I was like, you really need to probably do something about this, like seriously, because the only reason they're getting away with this is because they're impersonating your company and you're a company that prides itself on doing exactly what they said they were doing. So that makes you look super bad. <laughs> Not to be rude, but makes you look super bad um, and also yeah they're using your name to scam people out of money like they're totally fully impersonating your company so that's kind of on you to deal with that however you may I don't know if they have I haven't heard back from them they also told me to file a report with Action Fraud UK and that's what I did that day amongst crying and going to the bank and other things <laughs> um, 
I, yeah. I did also get a few desperate emails from Michael McCock afterwards where he clearly knew that I knew it was a scam and he wasn't sure if he was going to get his money. Um, and he was trying to like still make it seem like he was legit, even though he wasn't. Um, I never answered any of them. I haven't answered him since like the Saturday, I think. And uh, a few days later, I got a phone call from the bank saying that my money did not get recovered and that it was sent to the scammers and sayonara $3,000. Um, about a month later, like just last week or something, I got an email from Action Fraud UK saying, we have a lot of reports right now, we'll catch yours maybe someday. And I was like, okay, can't do anything about that either, can I? To be fair, I don't even know if the scammers are in the UK, I don't know if there's anything Action Fraud can do about it. My hope when filing that report, more so than getting my money back, even though I would love to get my money back because I don't have a lot of it. Um, my hope is that like, if anybody else reported that, then they could kind of link up those reports together and then there's more information and more evidence to build a case. Um, yeah. It seems crazy to me, I will say, how easy it is for people to get away with this. Like, there was no one for me to report this to. And when I did report it to someone, they are so inundated with reports of fraud that they months later have not gotten to it yet. So like, new career path? I don't know. <laughs> Probably not, because I've been on the other end of it and it sucks. Uh, yeah, that's the gist of how I got scammed out of $3,000. Um, I don't know if I've left some detail out. I'm sure when I was just talking I remembered something that I forgot to include in this. Oh yes! Ho ho ho! Ho I emailed Zoopla and Mylet to be like, just so you know, you advertised a fraudulent um, apartment and they and you put me in contact with a scammer. And Zoopla was like, oh, we're so sorry, we're gonna look into this. Mylet was like, yeah, we know. <laughs> I was like, you're gonna tell me that you knew that he was a scammer. They were like, yeah, he he raised some flags afterwards so we took him down. So you took down the advertisement, but you didn't contact anybody you put them in contact with. So you knew he was a scammer and you just you just let me get scammed after you put me in contact with him. Good on you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. If I have left anything else out um, and you or you have any questions, comments or concerns, Feel free to leave them in the comment section. If you know anybody who's been through this, that would be great. Just just to have somebody to mourn my loss with, other than my roommate. Because <laughs> I screwed her over too. Uh, yeah, but if you do know somebody who has been scammed by a fake open rent, uh, hit me up. There's nothing we can do other than plan a mutual vendetta, but uh, I think that would be fun. So, you know. I would also like to clarify, I'm not against open rent at all. I am still actually looking on their website for places to... I think Bird just went to the window. I'm still looking on open rent even for places to rent now. Um, but I'm still kind of skeptical or, I don't know, uh, apprehensive, I guess. But yeah, thanks for watching. Hope it's not too long, and I certainly hope uh, you don't get scammed like I did.